Welcome back to another episode of Miss New Podcast. As you all can see today, I have my beautiful and lovely girlfriend. She is the one of person that also inspired me a lot in the real life. Hello, Jimin. Welcome Hello. to my podcast. Let's go a little bit about... So how do we know each other? Let's talk about that story. The wonders of BJJ. <laughs> oh yeah, the wonder of BJJ. So I was courage enough to take mix martial art because I'm too bored in my life. I want something more exciting. Yeah. And and this is my best bestie on mat. We call bestie on mat because she <laughs> always kill me in the BJJ. Why do you choose BJJ? By the way, why do you choose mix martial art as well? I, I'm curious to know about that. Why? Huh? Well, I was this like a normal gym for a while, right? So after about two years, it got really boring. And you know when life gets boring, you just you just want to try something new, but at the same time, you want it to be useful. So mm. I thought like, yeah, MMA is something new, exciting, useful. And so, just try it, just do it. Yeah. Who who recommend you BJJ, by the way? Because like for you to know it's fun and exciting, me to be someone who recommend actually. And did a little bit of boxing last time. But um, it wasn't very functional, right? So mm. I was just googling lah, and then figuring mm. out like what are the things that might make me that's a sustainable sport for me. Yeah, like oh she, that. so she like me in this part googling. <laughs> 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 have you have a habit like you Google and you read review and all that stuff before you decide to do something? Because of I course. did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So some people so told me it would be a fake review and all that, right? I say yeah, yeah. Some is very fake review, but in 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 reality, some also very genuine people who like us really want to book review because one want some people to know that this is something is good for you, right? Mm-hmm. It's small amount, but it still adds it. So how was that BJJ change your life? Wow, so many new friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a cool friend like me. <laughs> Guys, this is how we daily talk, actually. You know, you know, podcast, you know me in real life. I'm the same. I'm not a different person. Okay, yeah. so, so live after uh, BJJ. Yeah, so more friends for sure. Um, mm. It's so interesting how BJJ seems so... So weird to people who don't do it. Like if you don't roll, you don't know how interesting it is. Like what mm. are the different things that you can do to really knock someone out. But mm. at the same time, you realize that with a little bit more knowledge, you are a lot stronger, mm. right? And you have a lot more power. But at the same time, you can choose to be gentle. Like yeah. how you always, how you always try to kill me. <laughs> By the way, to correct what she just say. <laughs> I never ever have a chance to kill her. If I can escape and not die under her hand, I'm have a lucky day. You know how many like I think like only three times that she tried to kill me and I never die. And I'm like, yeah, professor, today I'm not die. I not <laughs> tap out. You know, like a victory of the white belt that like don't tap out from the blue belt. It's like yes, you not die today. You amazing. You not die. That's it. So yeah. You are by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, cor- just to, <laughs> to just correct that no I'm not that's good yet you know she just n- cannot kill me yet but <laughs> like if, if we roll like 20 times she will kill me 18 times okay just two times oh. that I don't know somehow I have a strength to survive <laughs> but you have so much I know right I know I love yeah. I love BJJ too <laughs> beside of beside of friend and we've been around learn a lot of things how about BJJ apply and change you in your life and be a mother? I love to talk about mother because you are a wonderful mm-hmm. mother as well. So, you know my two boys? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, la, so because they are boys, they are a bit rowdy and everything. But I think with BJJ, it really comes a lot of discipline. Like, you know, you know how important it is in life to, to really be strong, be, be brave. Right to try new things and to be have to have the discipline to really keep going for it even when you keep failing. So mm. it's, it's something I tell the boys as well. And when they see me do BJJ, they understand. Right? Yeah. It's a it's a very high discipline uh, sport, and also mm. it's a big lesson for the kids, especially as a parent. We have to to show it every day. What is the uh, most cha- most challenging for you? 
after you having kid and have to learn a lot of lesson and then apply to your kid what is the most <laughs> tough challenging as a mom i think probably like most parents we have a lot of experience so much more than the children but sometimes you want to tell it to them but you worry that you know when you tell something to them you you rob them of the experience of learning it themselves yep. so a lot of times we know what's going to happen but it's so hard to just watch it happen but yeah you know, you know. to let them do it go through it feel the pain and then they know like yeah you know you just gotta do it yeah so yeah. I, I think that's really difficult sometimes knowing that yeah. they're gonna fall and just watch them fall yeah I'm sure in life you have a lot of lesson. If now suddenly I just ask you to pick one of the lesson you have learned that changed your life forever, what was that would be? Wow. Change my life forever. <laughs> For me, I can tell. From yeah, having the- having kid and move to Singapore. So that's I- just why, yeah. So it's yeah, like yours, life-changing. Yeah, but yours is awesome, right? I've always stayed in Singapore. Mm. Oh, yeah, like you always say in Singapore. I don't yeah. know. Maybe you have, but you never share with me. Or maybe you I feel don't... like, uh, 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 this yeah. is not something awesome. <laughs> maybe you will feel or you will compare your experience with someone else. That, oh my God, it's not awesome enough. But you were surprised that I'm sure now already it's flattening in your mind. Oh, this is the story. Just remember that your story is will never be the same with anyone, right? So what was that? Which moment was that? I cannot really think of any because frankly, I'm a person who controls the controllables. So mm. whatever I have chosen to do, I think it's my choice. Mm. Anything exceptional that happened... Not so much, but I think I think maybe what really changed me was that I started work really early. Mm. So I started to work um, when I was 15, the bare minimum legal age to work yeah. in Singapore at that point of time. Mm. Yeah, so, so because of that, I met a lot of people and gained a lot of experience from what they have done and what they can do and what they can teach me. And I think everybody should start work early. <laughs> start work early. So yeah. the start work early change your life. So what is change your life at that moment? Because I'm sure you will compare yourself with the same age of people, right? Why you see um, yourself different at that moment with the people around your age? So it's more of the ability to talk to people. Like mm, you can the confidence, you know what I mean? Confidence is one thing and also mm. you can also see you can kind of understand how they feel at any point of time. Like when we have a conversation about anything, even though sometimes people say A, a lot of times they mean A, B, C, or yeah. maybe they just expect. And, and it's something that, I mean, learning how to read people is not something that you can actually read a book about it and things like that. It's really true interaction with a lot of people, then you understand and you can relate to them a lot better. And I think I agree. It's, it's different because I see people around me who are a little bit more, um, they think more about themselves and a little bit unable to understand or empathize how other people feel. So, mm. yeah, I think I think that's probably what really changed me when I started work earlier. Mm. I, 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 have, I have to give you a lot of uh, acknowledge and also appreciate of your listening skill. Because I meet German in, in the class of a lot of people, but it's not everybody I can talk with. And I think she's the one of, I have to book highly in the listening skill because listening takes a lot of patience. Listening also takes a lot of, like, like you say, remove yourself out of the conversation to understand the person and willing to learn from the person. And I think that's what you, you mentioned, right? Because of early age, give you experience to meet a lot of people and touch a lot of people's life and it's really changed how we we behave and we grow up as well. Let's go a little bit in, 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 in you say like about work and meet with people. Mm. So what do you think about the important part of be a teamwork and find the right leader since you in the work environment for so long, for so many years? Which one is more important for you? Like teamwork or find the right leader? 
I think both are equally important because if you don't have the right leader, it's really difficult to to enjoy the teamwork that you want, right? Mm. Because like for me, before I joined um Great Eastern, that was about fifteen years ago already. Yeah, I I actually did um go and interview some other directors from different companies, and from there I I decided that you know training was very important for me. So I wanted to go into a company that had really good training programs and to make sure that before I talk to anyone, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. So that was really the first thing to look at the entire organization. But subsequently, once I decided that, you know, Great Eastern was, was the company I wanted to go to, that was when I started talking to a few directors within Great Eastern. Yeah, mm. and my director, she is a fantastic family person as well. Yeah, and the fact that she has very good soft and hard skills, it makes it easy for me to talk to her and so uh, when we have things to discuss or things to um, fulfill yeah it's, it's really easy because the teamwork is there we are able to talk to each other properly and of course with our other agency um, people as well yeah so it's not just about having good teamwork that you want you also want someone who who can lead you along the way to show you what is good to go, you know, and what is something maybe you don't want to do it right now and to just take a step back and think. Yeah. Mm. With the 15 years experience in the industry, you think what is the most valuable lesson you learn from the leading skill that you learn from people and also yourself apply to your job? What is the most important in the leadership skill that you think you, you take away for the last 15 years? Interestingly, is what you just said, which is really listening. The ability to listen to what the other person wants or what the other person mm. thinks they want and then gear them towards what, what will make them happy as well. At the same time, mm. fulfilling what they need to do. Yeah, mm. because there's, there's no point in, in pushing someone to do something they don't want to do or if it's your goal, but it's not their goal. So yeah. listening. Listening is really, really important, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good, very good point. Like, no point to give someone something that you want, but the person don't want. Then yeah. let's go to there. How do you improve your listening skill? If today, as a young leader watching this video and want to learn that, what do you recommend them to learn from? Well, I think the first step is really to know that you want to practice and to improve on your listening. And because of that, you need to consciously keep quiet. Mm, consciously of, keep quiet very good yeah because a lot of times we are so concerned about you know I need to let that person know what I want I need to let that person know what I what I'm thinking of but that you know you forget to keep quiet and mm. you forget to listen but mm. once you understand that you know okay it is time for me to listen I just need to keep my mouth closed mm. you know and, and that's really the first step because mm. once you are able to keep quiet for a long period of time you'll find that people start talking more to you and that's when you will start to understand, like, you will start to pick up things like your keywords, you know, some keywords that they are saying that maybe wouldn't have come out if they didn't have the chance to talk for a longer period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The longer people talk to you, the more they give you information. I agree. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they give you more information than you thought you, you, you needed, but it's, you may need some of that. How about okay. teamwork? How does that make you survive in the competitive environment because guys this podcast is recording in singapore and this country every minute is cow every minute is single and send even you guys don't agree about that but say yeah a lot of free stuff in singapore but for me even the taxi i book every minute we waiting rather they yep. deduct my money or the uncle taxi get deduct money okay so <laughs> it's very competitive a very competitive country how do you survive like yourself even you just say like yeah you're Singaporean you're born you raised here but it's still right the competitive pressure you have from you definitely will be different with me as a as a PR here I have a different kind of competitive but as a Singaporean with another Singaporean I think you have to deal with a different competitive especially in teamwork environment and work with different character and background how do you deal with it what skill you improve over the years to survive in that? Well, okay. So, like, in the insurance industry, so I do wealth planning, right? But I also do things like um, estate planning. So, estate planning is on, like, wills and trust and leaving a legacy for the people you leave behind. So, mm. when it comes to 
Singapore environment, like you say, I've grown up in this. So to be honest, we are quite used to the pace of life. So since primary school education onwards, we understand that we need to move a bit faster than other people in order to, to get ahead. But mm. like what you say is also true because um, with teamwork, actually a lot of things become faster. It's more efficient. I don't have to know 100% of the things in order for me to do a perfect job or even mm. a very good job, right? So everybody specializes in something. So I know that when I need something, there is someone for me. You know, I can tap on the expertise and we can discuss. And similarly, when someone needs me, right, for example, to talk about wills and trust or when it comes to like policy contracts, and that's when they will just drop me a message and we'll try to figure it out. So instead of doing it by myself, which could take like days or weeks, you know, sometimes it's just done in a few hours and, and that's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. What is the, the team member that you're looking for if you have a chance to to build your own team? Oh, I'm already building my own team. So, oh, okay. um, the Guy, I'm... if you want to join her team, the link under the description, all the information is down there. Okay, now tell me, what's the requirement <laughs> for you, for someone who can work with you? Let me see if I pass the test. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I think you spend too much time online. Maybe not you, but <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> uh, that's been oh, out. Social media. <laughs> no, no, it's fantastic to be on social media. Like to be honest, I'm not very social media y. So yeah. Um, but I don't think that's like a main criteria. I think a mm. person who wants to do well, or rather, a person I want in my team. Um, those that are already in my team, these are really people who are motivated to work. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter whether these people have a lot of time, but they do need the commitment. They need mm. to be able to commit that, you know, I want to do this and I want to do it well. So every time that they have, that they are spending on this, they are putting in the effort. I think I think that's really all I ask for. Yes. Yeah. Work hard. So that's, it's that's, mean like they're willing to learn and commit time to invest in this seriously. For sure. Yeah. Because we have so many things going on. We Even if we are not, doing other things, we are always on social media like um, Insta or watching your podcast, right? So, a lot of times, yeah, there are people who don't know how to stop doing the things that, you know, it's just for enjoyment. Yeah, so so, so my team right now, I think it's, it's really, really great because they know what they want and mm. even though I'm not pushing them, they are there to push me to say that, mm. hey, you know, Jermaine, I need help with this. I met this person how can I approach them, you know? Yeah, how can I help them to, to plan their life, uh, plan their finances and things like that? And I just want people who are motivated, who take mm. the initiative to reach out to people to, to help, yeah. It means they can lead themselves before they can lead the job done. How about you? Like, why people need to be teamwork with you? What, what thing about you that you think like, you're great and you're awesome and people should work with you? Yeah. Come on, let's go here a little bit. Come on, don't be humble. I know you're humble, okay? Not today. <laughs> no, it's, it's not about being humble. It's just that, you know, we always have a lot of things to learn and and the learning is never ending. So so I will never say like I'm awesome at something, but um, I think I am really able to find out things. Mm. Yeah, so you were saying, right, you like to Google too. I like to Google mm. too. But sometimes mm. it's not just about the Googling. It's about being to interpret the information that we get. Mm. So a lot of times when people come to me, it's really for, sometimes it's for technical things like policy contracts, like, you know, whether, how, how do you interpret these wordings and things like that. But other times it's when people give me a situation and ask me, what are the things other than ABC that, you know, might matter to that person? And because I started work early, so I can see from a lot of perspectives that, that um, some people may not. Yeah, and I hope that that is how I can value add to whoever's in my team. Mm. Yeah. I can I add some more. more here, guy, because I've been with German for a while. And this is what I would I would add on. Because sometimes you don't see what you're good at, right? So one thing I love about her is she has a very sincere heart. Like she really wants to help people from her heart. You know, I, I'm living in Singapore. I meet a lot of hard selling person. You guys know what is hard selling. Like, you know, you try to take the person choke at the throat and you try to choke something down, right? And the thing of to find a great insurance agency or a great 
a well-planned agency is you want someone like you, like Germans say, like you have to know how to listen first. You need to know how to, like you say, yeah, shut up first because you may don't know what I want, right? And then the next thing is it comes from bottom of your heart that you want to sincerely help the person to solve their problem. The money will be after that, but it's not about right now. I need the money from you. And that's what Germaine make me feel when I'm around her, when I talk about something about her work. And yes, she look like she's very professional when you talk about her work. But if you meet her in the person, like me personally, this is what I appreciate about you, that you have a deep sense of, of uh, connection with people more than just appearance of a job done, right? You have a human touch. You have a very like connection special that... When I around you, I feel like warm. I feel like family. I feel like more than close friend. Like I feel like I don't just know you. I like I feel like I know you for decade, for example. <laughs> and that is something that is is serious. It's not easy to build, especially when you go out right now. When people who are very shallow, like you just hi bye, how are you? You know, I appreciate the deep conversation every time I have with her because that's that's how. Of course, in one hour podcast, I cannot bring her whole personality here. But I think that's also one of the beautiful things as a leader and team member that everybody wish to have. Personal like me, I want to have people like that in my team. You want, I want to feel like I can trust them independently. I also feel like they would be the person that I have them in my shoulder when things get tough, right? And I also want to have them to cheer, cherish the success that we have together as a team member and, and all that quality. By the way, I'm not saying it because she's my friend, you know. I'm very selective, my friend, by the way. By now, you already know that it's not everybody my friend. <laughs> she know. <laughs> mm-hmm. right, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's for me to really, really appreciate someone for who they are. It takes it take a lot of time for me together and and. And so do I, right? I love to be with people who really, really have a solid value that to add to the world. Let's go to to the team a, a, a little bit more. So what is the most memorable story that you learned in the journey of leader and work with people in your team member that give you a lesson that now you see remember? I'm sure they should be happy. You're working for 15 years in the same yeah. industry. I'm sure you have many times that you, why am I still here, you know? Yeah. So what the story or the memory that you have that you learn from that? So I think one thing is that this industry is really individualistic. You actually can work by yourself without anybody around you. Mm. You can just do your own thing get your own clients, close your own cases, and life goes on, right? But um, I think when it comes to having a really good agency, you realize that there are so many people you can count on. There are so many things you can learn from them, right? And and when something is urgent, you don't have to worry by yourself. Mm. When Yeah, and, and there's, there's always, like you say, someone, a shoulder to rely on. And I think that that's very important because it can get very lonely in this industry. You realize that, um, like when I first started, I mean, I'm, I'm not a hard seller, so I didn't lose a lot of friends. But it, yeah. I did hear of a lot of insurance agents um, actually losing a lot of friends uh, because in Singapore, there is a stigma for being an insurance agent. Oh, yeah. Like, some people are worried. Yeah, some people are thinking like, oh, you are an insurance agent now. Every time I see you, are you going to like sell me something and things like that? And it's it's really really common. Um, yeah. I haven't I haven't really experienced any of any of my friends do that to me mainly because I don't I don't rely on them. No, you right? never. She never yeah, sell I, me anything. By the way, I'm not her client. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I tell like that. That's why I think this podcast is valid because I will tell you something. Right. If today she sell me something and I bring her to podcast, it sounds like I'm trying to selling something to you guys. But the point of my podcast is always about the real person and real life lesson. And why I say I, I like about Jermaine is she really who she is. Like she she just show me exactly who she is. You not try to be play around to, to push me because yeah, you're right. That's not the stigma, it's true. 
Oh my God, yeah. tell me about that, man. It's really a lot of agency when you just meet them and uh, straight away next day, they talk to you like they know you forever. And of course, we're human. We're not stupid. I can feel is <laughs> are you, are you try like yeah. something or, you know, and, and nothing wrong with the people doing the job. Okay. Of course, you have the right to do your job because that's what make you make a living. But it's after for a while, like you say, you lose a lot of friends, right? You, you will. Yeah, you will. Yeah. So, so I mean, how do you anybody, balance with that? Uh, I just don't rely on anybody. Mm. You know, at, at the end of the day, I don't really see my job as a salesperson. Mm. Uh, all along, it's more of being an educator, because even with oh, that's a very good one. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's really how I do everything. Um, when it comes to my work, uh, if you if you know me, if you have been through a, a session with me, you know that I will never ask you to buy. Yeah, but what I want to, how I always start off my conversations is, what do you know about this? You know, and then I will add on to your knowledge, and then from yep. there, if you think it's worth it, then you you settle it by yourself, mm. right? You ask me if you have questions, and then you decide on your on it by yourself. There's there's no reason to push anyone to spend money, yep. much less something that is such a life long com- commitment, right? Yeah. So yep. I am with you. So so when I first started, it was really difficult um knowing everything because you meet so many different people. Um, there's 101 products in the world <laughs> in Singapore itself thousands of them actually and oh, it's wow. difficult to know what is important for each person so mm. in this case my my director uh, and my colleagues they actually really really helped by giving a lot of good advice and in this line mm. really it's all about having a good mentor right and of course I hope that I'm a good mentor as well but well time will tell uh, so far, I think so good, no complaints. Yeah, but having <laughs> a good mentor who who's able to to bring you along and to see what you need, sometimes without even you knowing, right? Sometimes you don't know you need this, but the person can I'm see with it you. for you. Yeah. yeah, it's like you, right? You can see, you can see me, and you can see what I need, and you're pushing me to do this podcast. Yeah. I'm gonna- well, by the way, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 forcing my girlfriend to do this podcast. By the way, you. If right now you're still watching my podcast, drop a comment below. Is it really something that is natural for her? Because you see, most of the time, you guys would think, why you didn't bring much people on your podcast? I can. I have a lot of people send me requests. Can I be on your podcast? But my podcast is very selective for me. One of the reasons is because I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because I really enjoy educating people, like you say. I love to share knowledge. I love to share the good thing to people. And I refuse to share things that just for a sake of stroke your ego. And for me, it's all about authenticity. I'm living in a world right now that I fight to fight the authenticity is so hard. It's so hard to the point that I have to push people around me who I know they have a lot of good value, good heart. And uh, they are really a really great person. It's just they don't want to be online. Like Jermin said, oh my God, I hate you. I don't want to do this. I say, yeah, I know you don't want to do it, but you not do it for yourself. You do it for young people who are going to look up to you and they want to hear something. For example, you're in this industry for 15 years. Just assume tomorrow someone wants to enter the industry that you've been for 15 years. And like you say, you love to learn from Googling. They were Googling as well. They want to meet someone who is in Singapore, same vision at them, same connection, speak the same language, and important that you somehow share something that they can connect with you. Let's talk about that because I think connection is very, very important, especially for customers. So how do customers can find the good Asian and well planners support for them? Since in this industry, there is so many... <laughs> It's so many agencies, so many people doing the job. How can you stand out from the rest of them? And how do the customer can reach out the people like you? Mm, okay, so, so to be honest, it is true that um, in this industry, the turnover rate is very fast. You have seen people who join and then maybe they leave in six months, one year. Yeah. or some, some can last until maybe three to five years, but they still leave. Mm. right? Um, one thing is because of sustainability. So when it comes to my team, I always tell them, Yes, the money is important, but you must do things that is moral, ethical, right? And something that you really believe in. So, yeah, you, you just got to reach out to people. And then with sincerity, most people can see sincerity. 
Yes. And you cannot lie about sincerity for a very long time. Maybe Correct. you can pretend for a while, but but it won't last. Yeah, the, the act won't last. And yeah. and that's why um yeah, don't don't really look at the money. Look at the sustainability, look at the fact that you really want to help people because as much as you rely on them for your living, they also rely on you for their lifetime planning. Mm. Right? Yeah. So yeah, so so I mean most people they when they find their insurance agent is really through referrals. That's mm. pretty much how I get mine as well. So mm. you know someone who has an agent or maybe you are looking for something and you ask your friends like, hey, do you know someone good? You know, yeah. do you know someone who can understand us? Right. And and that's where I get most of them. But, oh, yeah. That's, yeah, good. It's, it's that's the best yeah, word of mouth, we say. Yeah, there's a perfect testimonial already. And yes. uh, when I first started, of course, everybody asked me like, are you going to last for very long? Are you going to stay in this industry? And to be honest, I can only say I will stay for as long as I can stay. Yeah. Right? Because because everyone's occupation may change. We never know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah but, but I know that this is something that I like. This is something that I want to do. And that's the that's kind of the only assurance I can give. Mm. Yeah. But, um, after after a few years, I'm I'm happy to say la, quite quite a big proportion of my, my clients are really from referrals. And I'm very grateful and very appreciative as well. What what do you learn from word of mouth kind of referral like you say, right? Because right now a lot of people don't understand the compound interest or call like long term in the same industry for a while. You get what I mean? Because it's quite easy, like you say, like six months they will change job or mm. like one year they will change job or like they will, they will always try to find something new. What hold you back and keep you interested in what you do? What is your secret on that? Not really a secret, but to be honest, I got interested in insurance when I was in polytechnic. So after secondary school, I went to poly, and then uh, one of my year two or year three courses was on insurance. And uh, when it was just a seminar, actually, not even a full fledged course. So when I attended it, my first thought was that, wow, it's such a useful thing that everybody should have, but because I know the stigma of insurance. We hear our relatives talking about it when you're young, talking about, oh, you know, this insurance agent, oh, I'll leave again, I have to change my relationship manager again, and things like that. So, so it wasn't something I even considered. But when I started to understand insurance and I realized that, oh, wow, you know, it's something that can really help people when they need it. And that's when I got interested in it. So at that point of time, 18 years old, I cannot take my license. I had to wait three years. So wow. only when uni, yeah. Then I went to do my licensing. And then from there I just I just never looked back because I could always see the importance of a person who has insurance. You know, when when, when shit hits the fan. Mm. When shit hits the fan, a person with and a person without insurance, the difference is too big. Too it's big, really yes. Too big. Yeah. So yeah. so what makes me stay here is that I truly believe in it. I feel that if you don't have it, you know, Yes, everything may go very smoothly. You may never ever need it, but if you need it and you don't have it, then then whose fault is it? Is it yeah. really the person's fault, or is it the the thousands of insurance agents in Singapore who never ever reached out to me? Mm. Yeah. yeah, education so, is important. Yes. Yeah. The, well, the, the, I'm saying I'm saying that because it's really like for me to when I come to Singapore, I learn so much about insurance. Yeah, I have my own insurance plan and all that, that but. It come from the uneducation environment to Singapore. I agree with you. If you guys never pay a bill of like five thousand dollar for just food poisoning in Singapore, then you don't know how important insurance is. <laughs> that's right. a, that's a true story for me. That's a true story. That's when I just come to Singapore and I don't even know all these things as it right. And it's like my ex will haven't even buy anything for me yet. I'm just landing for like one day and I have food poisoning. And yeah, oh, welcome to the real world. Yeah, yeah, it's a true story. That is the early time when I just came here. And I don't even have long term long term visit pass back then. Like I just came for like register to marry. Like that's how mm -hmm. scary and how quick was that? You can go to that. And by the way, I'm 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 not saying it to complain. I'm just saying what Jeremy said is mm -hmm. right. It's something that I feel so blessed that. I had to hit that 5,000 early so I don't have to hit 500,000 now. 
because you just learned the heavy lesson that yeah, it's just a water drip in your blood to make you awake again and a one medicine for your tummy. You can end up five thousand if you are foreigner in Singapore. Yeah, yeah. My helper another day, she have the same food poisoning something. She fly back from uh, from Indonesia. But and of course, I have insurance for her, and in Singapore, they cover for subsidy and all that. The bill come out is like nine hundred dollars something for just less than thirty minutes in the hospital emergency midnight. Okay, if I don't have all this subsidy, you guys, I think only nine hundred dollar. No, nine hundred dollar for thirty minutes is a very, <laughs> very <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Okay, that's just a very expensive yeah. for thirty minutes. Okay, so yeah. Is I I want to add more of that because it's very interesting when you say you b- truly believe in the product and you truly believe everybody should know. How was that change you by doing this to help you as the wife, the mother, and the family woman in your life? Are you plan for everybody the same? How do you educate people around you, especially your loved one and your close one? Yeah, your mom, your dad, you know, right? Like a lot of people. How was it help you in your personal life as well? Um, okay, so because of all these planning, okay, I also realized that I really like to plan for things. Like I like to I like to be able to try to look into the future and try to predict what are the things that we may or may not need, you know. And and I've always been a planner. Like I plan for my own wedding, I plan for the house, even my house renovation. I'm kind of like the project manager because I like to know when when is what happening and things like that. The boss so, lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, like when it comes to financial planning, it's, it's really very natural for me. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just really natural to, to see and know what are the things that are quite likely that we will need, right? And because every day I'm doing planning, so when it comes to the family, of course, I like to plan as well. So like tomorrow I'm going to Vietnam, for uh, what's that called? For a convention, and mm. I'm going to be there for about one whole week. So mm. during that seven days, I already know exactly what my kids will be doing at any point of time. Uh, they have their now it's holiday. I don't have to prepare for their recess and their snacks. But yeah, so so I know what's gonna happen. I know what they're gonna what they're likely gonna eat. But I don't micromanage. But I like to know as a whole whether are you gonna be safe, are you gonna be healthy. Are you gonna be sleeping on time? You know. Oh, I don't. I don't want to be her daughter. Sorry, <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm, I'm like you know, we're so similar that we don't want to be around too much. You get what I mean? <laughs> As a mom, I understand completely what she say. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, oh, but if I have to live with a mom like me, I don't think I want to. You know. <laughs> I know right. right. But so, so I, I have to consciously put aside myself sometimes and understand that you know because my boys are eight and twelve. They are really, really independent. So yeah. to them, I just tell them, okay, holiday homework, first day, finish up. Mm. After that, it's really your holiday. Mm. Right? You, you want to you wanna play, you want to do whatever, go ahead. But let me know where you are. So so I'm hoping that they learn from a little bit like that as well. So they have lear- they are learning right, mm. to inform me before anything happens. Lovely. Which gives me a peace of mind. Because I, being, being overseas is difficult. I mean, if anything happens, to fly back is at least four hours. Yeah, right. and and it's nothing's gonna happen like just last minute. So yes, I like to know what's happening at any point of time, and yeah, and I can preempt myself for what to feel and things like that. So like when it comes to my parents as well, I because when I joined this industry fifteen years ago, uh, well, money is not really there, right? So I mm. couldn't plan much for their retirement. So right now I can. So I'm putting on a bit more for them on a monthly basis to make sure that. Uh, when my dad retires, so my mom retired last year, so mm. she's okay. Yeah, but when my dad retires, he's also self-employed. So when he retires, I want to make sure that he has enough to last his lifetime. And yeah. I think more importantly is when I am not around. They, I have two brothers, yes, but uh, I also want to make sure I don't burden them. Yeah. So for my own planning, I do plan a certain amount for my parents. You know, if something were to happen tomorrow to me mm. or mm. whatever lah. Then uh yeah so my kids everything I think I think if I were to die like right now I think I'm good my mm. family will be fine they might be wow. even better than if I'm alive but never mind 
Uh, that's come from the insurance plan. Like, after she buy every plan for her family, I guess she will like you guys done. You guys get all the benefit from me, okay? It's tomorrow I die. You guys give live a good life. Remember that. You know? that's and, and I think like insurance gives you like so much peace of mind that you know, even though I have two kids, I have I have aged parents, I have a younger brother who's ten years younger than me, and I have an elder brother. So mm. the peace of mind is there such that I know. Whenever I travel, I don't need to worry so much, you know. Even if I want to do something crazy like bungee jumping, skydiving, never you know, call me when it. you do all that. Okay. I know. No, don't call me. I know <laughs> this girl. Don't don't look at her sweet look, and you guy will think like you know I fall into that trap all the time. She's smiling at you, and she look at you. I'm choking you, yeah. <laughs> That's what she doing all the time, babe. I'm going to unbar you. Are you ready? Like who going to kill you and tell you three seconds before that? Hey, I'm see, going to kill you. you. Yeah, yeah. She planned to kill me. And I let you know in advance. And I'm so she planned well. Right? She planned well. You know, and she's so gentle. And she asked my permission to kill me. How about that? Who 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 play BJJ this moment? You will know what I'm talking. By the way, I love this part. I will cut this. And I will post in the story how me and my BJJ friend talking with each other. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, this 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 will be a this is a true story every time. Okay, every morning in the mat, like we see each other, say you again. Also, we don't have any other option anyway. You know, <laughs> we don't have much lady play BJJ. So, guy, please come and join us in BJJ more. That's really fun for us, right? Yes, the more the better. So how about like, the thing that you can't plan? Because you talk about you plan very well. How about like thing that you didn't plan, have ever hit your life in that that thing that you not plan, how, and and how you deal with it? Thing that hit me unplanned. Um. Honestly, I think I take everything in my stride quite okay. Probably, maybe probably just like when I didn't expect my elder one to play punk on me. Mm. So like, it, it's really very minor things that happen that I cannot plan for. Things like I always thought he was a good boy, but then you know one day he got caught using his phone and then being rude to the teacher and things like that. And these are all unplanned because then when the teacher do things behind your back, okay? okay. Yeah, do th- doing things behind my back, right? But. To me, I understand, you know, like every child, at some point of time, we are gonna be like that. Yeah. We're gonna be try to be funny. We're gonna push limits. We're gonna do things that we want. We're gonna ignore other people. And to me, it's it's normal, right? It's normal. It's yes, this situation is unplanned. When I received the call, my first thought was, oh my god, I'm a bad mom. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but but if when I stop and think about it, I I realized that you know when we were young, we do that too. We don't go to school. I mean, maybe I was worse than him, but sometimes we don't go to school. Sometimes we just want to play punk. And I think when something happens that's unplanned, just take a deep breath and and try to see where that is coming from. And if it's something that we can solve, we solve. If it's not something we can solve, take another deep breath and just move through it. Yeah, there's gonna be a thousand and one things that we cannot plan for. And I think yeah. that's how life is, right? When when there are mm. things that happen spontaneously, that's when you realize, oh, okay, that makes me alive. That makes me feel yeah. things from from day to day things. Yeah, and it give you some excitement. Yeah, 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 some excitement, right? Like that's why I, I joke all the time, right? Remember, I told you, I say I don't need to create drama around me. People around me give me drama every day, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's also important we learn to ignore the dramas, especially oh, yeah. those that you know. Uh, well, some dramas are good. Some dramas that you learn, right? Yeah. But some dramas just drain you, and yeah. those are the ones that you know just ah, forget it. You know, just step away, and and it's important to be able to to differentiate that kind of drama. It's mm-hmm. not we'll be so busy, too busy. Yeah. I I love to to ask another leader who are female and lady. About the journey, and today is the same to you. I want to, I want to ask you. It's today, of course. Jeremy now and Jeremy in twenty is different, right? We look back, and if you meet someone who are like Jeremy twenty years ago, twenty years old, 
what advice you want to give to that young lady when they in the place of unknown they're looking for their dream their future want to be a leader what the step you want to give them to start to a young lady or if they already know what they want i think it's very simple just keep going oh my god at that age is you don't know what you want <laughs> Oh, you won't know what you want baby you babe babe let's be real. Oh, sorry i call her babe at this moment because let's be real when you're 20 you really know what you want like, i don't know i'm 20 i didn't know what i want <laughs> but if, if you have somewhere you want to go right or something okay. you want to do or something you want to achieve or someone you want to help then the only thing is to just keep going forward Right, there, there, there will be people around you who will say, you know, it's, it's not going to happen, you know, it's impossible. Just don't be crazy, you know. And I think these are the crazy people because they've never tried, they've never succeeded. Mm. And it's not fair to listen to them. Yeah. So you just have to ignore and, and move forward to your direction. And, and I think maybe the people you hang out with is very important. Hang mm. around the positive ones. The negative ones, uh, you can go high by and you know that's it. You you mm. don't have to hate them, but you can consciously not be around them. I think that's mm. important. Yeah, that's a good thing about Jimin. She can deal with both. I can. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, so that's that's one thing you can learn. By the way, you can learn and contact direct to Jimin if you want to learn how to deal with both negative and positive people. <laughs> No, that's also the skill, really. It's also the skill. I tell you, I, it's not easy. Like, I, my face was so obvious if I be with someone that I'm really not interested, right? It I can't be. <laughs> yeah, it, like, it can't be covered. It. Like, every, like, my good friend, even you, right? Even everybody tell me, can you try to show your face like people don't know that you don't like them? It's just so <laughs> obvious. i like, how? How? Something that I... I, I'm, I'm still couldn't figure out how I'm going to do it. It's just so, it's like, you call what the uh, beachy rest face, is it? <laughs> Resting beach face. <laughs> I think that's what, I think that's what we have. Yeah. This was great conversation today with you. I learned so much from you. I mean, I learned so much when I'm around you, but today I have a chance to learn about you more and more. Every time I'll be close Ooh. with you. Thank you to be my guest today, by the way. You've been an awesome Thank guest. You. Thank yeah, you, for you give us me. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like my audience were watching this and like did, did she just torture the guests to come here? <laughs> no, I yeah. bright her, you know. I will bring her go eat soon and I make sure that she fed well. Okay, so I know her knowledge will be valuable for a lot of people. Thank you for being an awesome guest. And I always tell you this in private and I really mean it. You are awesome woman. Continue be shy. The world need more women leader like you, you know. It's have to come from heart, sincerity and important that the love and the care and the support you have for other people. I deep down appreciate that. I think sometimes we forget to say that to our close friend or our loved one or people around us because like we just assume no. I think they know it themselves, you know, but it's not true. For me, all this is important because like you say, if tomorrow, if I die, I want this the last thing you remember about our conversation, mm. right? Like how much we appreciate the time together. And yeah, like I say, people come and go. I would love to have you in my life as long as we can. But in now, for now, I'm happy to have you in my life and to share with you this journey at, as be a female leader together, you know. And I, I love the work you do. So please continue it. And you guys who I love German conversation with me, all her information is under the description. Yep, she is a social media noob. Doesn't mean that she's not going to improve. <laughs> so, <will> improve. <laughs> yeah. So make sure to click the link below and contact with her. If you are in Singapore and you really love to have a leader like her, contact with her. You want to work with someone like her, team member, contact with her. And if you are a client and you want to reach out for some agent like awesome like her, also contact the link below okay and uh, once again thank you for watching my podcast today and we will see you again in the next episode thank you bye bye jamin thank you for continue support my missy podcast and don't forget to